Something Hello, seems... my name is Bondi no, Bozen. That's not normal. Now, we, hmm. we are going to play RimWorld today. So, I haven't played RimWorld probably in a. Mom. In just we a lot seven months, I haven't played Rimworld yet. Because so I made well, a part two video, which is the last one, so I'm gonna make part three. So today, baby, I'm gonna make I know, it. I know. I'm sure the title card I, know, I, I made for this so, would show that much. We also are making this oops. video with the idea that you, sorry, the audience, sorry, sorry. are either a newer player who is trying to find some cool mods okay. after enjoying the base game, or a returning player who doesn't quite know what is still around or just came out. So you'll find mods both new and old. So what qualifies a mod as can't live without? Well, the criteria is pretty um, simple. Is it in 1.12 right. version of Rimworld or very few 1.1? So make sure. Mod, which means you can download it right now and play as of writing this video. And is it a mod that can help you in some way? So no mods that make gameplay harder. I said no mods that make gameplay harder. I want to thank everyone who supported this list. And if you have any mod suggestions, let us know in the comments down below and like and subscribe as well. Every like we get holds Mr. Void's Legion of Chaos back one hour. That's gonna be in my nightmares. On to the list. All right, okay. let's get this out of the way. First off, for mods you can't live without is every vanilla expanded mod by Oscar and his wonderful, wonderful team. Long story short, oh. these mods fit the vanilla First, feel completely, I'm not just being gonna... too over the top and broken. Highly uh, recommended okay. for any playthrough. My personal favorite mods of these are the Vikings and Mechanoids. Mm -hmm. Beautiful combination there. Next up, the Runtime GC. Highly recommended for any playthrough because it cleans up your files and speeds up your game. Great, especially when you don't have a supercomputer at home. No one else is great. Uh, Actually hey. being able to quickly get your pawns to haul or chop trees when you need them to. Allow tool helps you do just that. Honestly surprised the functions aren't in the base game by now. Super useful and you will feel so off when you don't have it. So if you've been playing modded Rimworld a while, you might be frustrated with dealing with all those mods, especially since this list is going to be pretty big with mods you should download. Good news though, Fluffy has you covered. The mod manager is extremely helpful with making your mod pack, letting you search for mods, indicating what version of the mod you have, and even auto sorting oh no, mods based on the things needed to run the mod. Also, as an honorable mention, Fluffy's mod list has plenty of things that can help you, but like Vanilla Expanded, it's not fair to other mods if we give them more than one slot. You won't go wrong using any of those mods, but the mod manager is almost required nowadays to set up a functioning mod list. The best thing about Rimworld is the variety of animals you can tame and have, though, for some like this little cutie. Their tiny bodies aren't strong enough to handle the harsh realities of the Rimworld, but with Xenobionic Patron, you can give any animal any bionic you obtain. Now, don't be put off by the name. This mod isn't going to turn your little friends into mutant monsters out to eat your grandpa. This mod gives cross compatibility with everything from modded animals to modded implants. Now you can have your chinchilla oh. horde looking like a mini army of Robocops. Oh, and I should mention technically 1.1, but it's fully functional to 1.2 Rimworld. Prepare Carefully is one of those mods that needs no introduction. The ability to customize your starting pawns and equipment is the backbone to making your game easier or harder or even just setting up certain thematic playthroughs or game challenges. Want an entire party of Luciferium addicted pawns so you have to scramble to find more? You can do that. How about one old woman with a hundred cats? Yeah, go oh, wild and make your crazy sorry. cat lady. How about a party I'm just gonna make a part three face? today. Hey, I totally have better animal skills than that. Always download this mod. It's a wonder why this isn't even in the base game with how useful of this. Speaking of things that what? should also be in the base oh, game, you play stuff. When you start okay, out, you it's going to more than likely be your starting material sorry. for the lack of stone. But once you get a good supply of stone bricks, You're of course you are leave. going to replace them, right? But it can be so frustrating to have to deconstruct the walls just well, to change say? materials. Sometimes you might forget about this project, so now you've got raiders or wild animals okay. coming in to ruin your day. With Back this mod, time. you get the benefit of your walls without risking your safety. Just Oops, replace the materials just whenever you can. No, being out on the rim will make things pretty grim. Don't try. Grim reality. So <laughs> like that segue I'm just gonna watch. Mod. Grim reality. This mod basically tweaks some of the mood raises and penalties for certain things happening. Tweaking how your pawns react to things that in the grand scheme of things wouldn't matter. Oh, what about? Definitely a good mod to feel more realistic I'm just gonna as it look were. For if you want to survive out in the rim, you need money. Either to pay off people to not kill you, buy medicine so you don't uh, lose your favorite pawn to green thanks to a beaver, and of course show off. Oh, let's do three petabytes. <laughs> it's actually kind of amazing how many wires got crossed on this project, but we are finally doing it. 
We are building okay. petabyte project number two, and not a moment too soon. We may not even have enough space left on our servers to offload the footage that we are recording right now. And Linus, you might say, you could just stop being such a digital hoarder and, oh, I don't know, delete some bloody data. But I actually have the perfect counter argument to that. <clears throat> you sound like my wife. Just let me have my fun. And we're gonna have some fun today, ladies and gentlemen, because um, I accidentally have over three petabytes of hard drives. Smart Deploy makes it easy to handle daily IT tasks like Windows imaging, patching, updating apps, and migrating user data. You can do it all over your existing network or the cloud without leaving your desk. Get your free offer at smartdeploy.com slash Linus. All right, so the first problem was entirely my fault, actually. I told Seagate that our goal was to show off one petabyte of usable space in a single 4U enclosure, instead of doing it in two enclosures like we did last time. And I told them that to do that, I would need 75 of their 16 terabyte hard drives to account for the space that we'd lose to formatting overhead and parity data. So that's true. In five ZFS RAID Z2 arrays, we would be able to lose ugh, up to two drives per VDEV. So that's up to a maximum of 10 of our 75 drives before we would actually lose any data. And that would still yield over 950 terabytes of accessible space. One small problem though. Oh, oops, sorry. It's actually yeah, kind of amazing how many wires got crossed on this project. Oh. But we are finally doing it. Oh, no. We are building petabyte project well, number two. And not a moment too soon. We may not even have storage. enough space left yeah. on our servers to I offload the footage one. that we are recording right now. And Linus, you might say, camera. you could just I stop being record. such a digital hoarder and, oh, I don't know, delete well, some bloody called. data. But Panasonic. I actually have the perfect counter argument to that. <clears throat> you sound like my wife. Just let me have my fun. And we're gonna have some fun today, ladies and gentlemen, because um, I accidentally limit. have over three length. petabytes and of hard drives. No Smart Deploy makes it easy to handle daily IT tasks like Windows imaging, patching, updating apps, and migrating user data. You can do it all over your existing network or the cloud without Wait, leaving your desk. Get your free offer Some at smartdeploy.com slash Linus. Okay. Oh, to a total of over two petabytes of storage. But those are also only meant to have up to 24 drives in an enclosure. I mean, honestly speaking, I would have been perfectly comfortable with the Iron Wolf Pros. They've got an extra two years of warranty compared to the regular Iron Wolf. They've got included data rescue service, and they've got a greater rating for both their per year use and mean time between failure. But Thing is, we're supposed to be setting a good example for you guys. And when I clarified, hey guys, so the plan is actually to put all the drives into one system, they sent over the big dogs. Meet the Exos 16 in its top current capacity of 16 terabytes. Each of these is real. Oh, okay, remote's now back. Okay, I just watched Nuber videos. I just spent some time watching Nuber. So I like them all. Hey, hurry up, you Again. lazy turds. Come on. Get up. Come on. Uh, sir, work. he's already well, dead. slowing. You're right, he is. I can feel you know my what this computers. Means, right? Stop wasting I time. Every second fans. you rest is another second Let's wasted. Work, slaves. Let's see. Ah. Hey there, and welcome to another video well, by yours truly, Newbert hmm. the Great. Looks this like time around, I'll hard. be talking about 
Ooh, looks like yes. In RimWorld, there are a lot of stuff like you can do with your colony, from high. planting food to training colonies to conquering high. the world. It all consumes time, both in real life Thank as you. well as in games. Since that's the case, I'd like to present you guys some tips that could be helpful to save time. If you've got any of your own, feel free Ooh, to drop them in the comments this? down below. I'm sure everybody will appreciate it. Before we begin, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more cool vids like this. Now, let's go. My first tip for saving time and being more efficient in RimWorld is to synchronize your colonists' sleep schedules. This can be accomplished by getting them all awake, sleep, work, and engage in leisure at the same time. For example, if you go I with the default sleep timers, sleep. they'll have two free hours after waking and two hours of recreation time before sleep, with the rest filled in with work. It makes giving orders and managing colonists so much easier when they're all on a fixed schedule. Syncing recreation time is also useful as it provides socializing opportunities. Rearing livestock is necessary in RimWorld for everything from leather to milk, but animals can sometimes be a pain to wrangle or protect. That's where tip number two comes in, livestock quantity over quality. What do I mean? Well, think of it this way. If a herd okay. of your sheep comes under threat, maybe you'll okay. lose a few. No biggie. You've got a lot more. If you pet a thrombo dies, it's a huge time investment and setback, and it'll be hard to replace. Now, with all that said, with the 1.3 update and the pens, you can use pens. But if you're not a fan of pens, this all still applies. Oh dear. Damn, I'm just sped up. Speaking of animals, another time-saving tip uh -oh, is to use them when bench. hauling objects. I'm not sure if you can call this oh, genius crap. per se, but it's useful food regardless. Assuming you have spare pack again. animals, just give them commands Dude, to pick I up certain objects and they'll do so. Carry the objects to a location them. of your choice. You can carry lots oh, of stuff is. from crates to dead it bodies. It's really handy and saves time by allowing your colonists to focus on their task. Finally. Number four on my tip list involves Finally. food efficiency. Okay. In the early game, it can often be a good idea to use nutrient paste when feeding your colonists. It's not that you can't cook food, rather nutrient paste provides a lot of nutrition and can be prepared easily. There's also no food poisoning risk and therefore no downtime with them getting sick, unlike regular food, especially since most colonists won't be skilled chefs early on. The downside is of course a mood debuff. Since nutrient paste tastes horrible, you can offset it via recreation though. Next, let's talk about vanimetric power cells. These giant batteries are rare quest rewards and provide a constant flow of 1000 watts of energy without needing any input whatsoever. Vanimetric Metric cells are also portable, oh, wait, so you can no. move them around. No. If you get your hands on okay. one, try to utilize it. The power output isn't so super high, but it can be useful for maintaining for power ones. to vital infrastructure in case of blackouts. It's also useful for raiding um. outposts because you have power for turrets that you want to bring along, so keep that in mind. All edible items have an expiry timer, after which they'll rot and go to waste, along with all the time you spend harvesting them. Generally, refrigeration slows this timer down, but you can also oh, cook raw food word, to reset the timer. Food. Just cook your food. It'll save you time in the long run since you'll have less trouble reharvesting stuff and feeding your colonists. One cool system that RimWorld has is the Inspired Creativity Buff, which provides an effective pawn the chance to create a legendary artwork. Oh, you can no. then sell that piece of art for loads of money. The problem is, this buff only lasts 8 days. It usually turns into a mad scramble to finish a new piece, which wastes time that could otherwise be spent on other tasks. The trick is to keep a few unfinished art pieces in storage. Since the buff applies on completion of an artwork, this tip allows you to oh, manipulate no, your stitch. chances of acquiring I'm legendary sure. art. Ever eaten dinner in front of your TV? Well, you can, and should, make your colonists do the same, or something similar at least. It's as easy as sticking a horseshoe pin in the middle of your dining room by combining your recreation and dining rooms, colonists can gain all the associated buffs in one room. It saves resources, time, and space. Really handy tip. Hey, sorry, I was having a bit too much fun. Now that you're here, could I just trouble with a quick reminder? Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. If you've enjoyed the video so far, that is. I'd really appreciate okay. it, and you can get notified Wait, immediately when new recording. content comes out. Cool, right? Do it now. Four Done? Minutes. Let's get back okay. to the video. Thanks. If you need to feed your animals world. but are lacking in pawns with I the grower skill, what do you do? Harvest video. the hay grass anyway? So, and a reduced yield? Here's a suggestion. Watching. Plant daisies instead. I with a nutritional value of 0.18 and 2.5 days growth speed, they're useful to plant great. grazing fields instead of getting your colonists involved. Let the animals harvest yeah. these daisies directly and while you can do the same with hay grass. It has lower nutritional value of feed directly. Speaking of animals, one of